Hello everyone, this is uh, Man DG, and uh, today I will be watch watching a Critical Granker video. Now I've never seen one of these uh, videos actually, I, I learned of his channel recently and wanted to watch his video. It's on the She Hawk show, Bob uh, uh video that he recently um, released. And I wanted to watch it just to see what he thought about the show because I didn't like the show. I quit the show the first four episode, episodes in. I watched the Daredevil episode, and that was it. Um, I see this is the show show is disappointing for me because the MCU has always like neutered like Hulk and I actually wanted to see a show where um uh, Jennifer Walters was balancing out uh, life as a hero and a lawyer. Um, I love the premise of the show. I it, it, I really hated it when the actual writers and directors of the show set it into uh, other writers and directors, but someone um, in the know in the making of the show that I read in an interview that said that the entire show was basically a troll on Marvel fans and how um I, I just didn't end up watching like loving it like it's probably my lowest rated show um that Marvel has done uh I really I really hoped that the Shehawk show would be good because oh it came out in such a time that Andor was really good. Uh House of the Dragon was really good. Um even Lord of the Rings was better than this. And I, I did like that show. Like, at least Lord of the Rings had, like, visuals for us to look at. So it was really, um, it was really a disappointing show. And I know some people are going to go after me for saying this. Um, but they really destroyed the rule of show do tell. Uh, like, in the first episode... Uh, Tatsunya Mazani literally just as uh, just Jennifer Walters just like tells us that she's been like cat called and does it feel safe and that's why she uh, basically can control the hawk from better but honestly if you had just seen one, one scene of her being uh, cat called or underestimated as because she's a woman and before before that before that scene that would I would have been fine with it really I would have been fine with it but did it show us anything like that so yeah honestly I would have just loved the show to be about how maybe um after Jennifer Freeze Blonsky from prison, he transforms and attacks New York again, and she has to fight him. Basic premise. She has to fight him. And then she has to deal with the fact that it was basically her fault that Blonsky escaped, escaped prison, and she basically helped in whatever damage would occur and we'll have to deal with the fallout. 
boom show dramatic dramatic show you don't even have to see they they didn't even like yeah it was just disappointing just disappointing um but yeah let's start watching this video Critical Drinker, The Critical Drinker, in uh, October 12th, 2022, so just 10 days ago, already has almost 2 million views. Congratulations, Gladrail, you've defeated everyone, as always, well done, you can go home now. I am grateful you have not known evil as I have. But you have not seen what I've seen. I've seen my share. You have not seen what I have seen. I've seen She-Hulk. <laughs> Jesus wept. Where do I even begin with this one? I mean, I know I've shat on Marvel's TV like shows in the past it. for basically being a never-ending race to the bottom, chewing up popular characters and tarnishing the legacy of previous movies in a desperate effort to launch next product or push the message. message. Or just keep the content sludge pipe flowing at full capacity for Disney+. Plus. But as bad as they were, there was at least some semblance of quality control, some attempt to tell a coherent story. It was rarely a good- Yeah, for a comedy show, comedy show, it wasn't even that funny. Now that now that you think about it, like, I never- I probably only laughed during the Daredevil scene. Uh, the Walk of Shame. But that was it. Like, the Daredevil episode was like the best episode. If they had kept that kind of um, tone throughout the entire show, you would have. I would have enjoyed the show. Story and definitely not worth your time, but you at least felt like there was some kind of point to the show. But She Hulk is a different beast, a show that lacks even the basic elements of a story with which to grapple, whose cast of one dimensional caricatures lurches and meanders from one pointless episode to another with absolutely no sense of where they're going or why, while desperately trying to push jokes that are about as funny as a fucking cancer diagnosis. Ooh. It's a show that seems to have been conceived and written in the space of a single afternoon by a creator team, and I use the word creative to describe these people in the same way I'd use the words faithful adaptation to describe <laughs> rings of power, that couldn't quite believe that they'd actually been given the gig. And having watched it myself, I can't fucking believe it either. And because I want to get this shit over with as quickly as possible, allow me- yeah, and I heard they want- they actually want to do a spin-off series of the Madison character. Which honestly, I would watch, just not with these directors. To outline the plots, and believe me, this isn't going to take long because barely anything happens in this fucking show. The story, such as it is, picks up with Jennifer Walters, a successful attorney. And that's basically all I can tell you about her, because that's all there really is to her life right. and personality. She's a lawyer, and she really likes her job. And that's it. But when she's out driving one day with her, her cousin like Bruce Banner, who somehow managed to turn himself back into Mark Ruffalo so the rest of the plot could happen, she gets involved in a car wreck because she wasn't paying attention to the roads. Take that, unfair stereotypes that women are bad at driving. And while pulling him out of the wreck, some of Bruce's blood fuses with her own, thus turning her into a female version of the Hulk. A She-Hulk, if you will. Naturally, this presents quite the problem, because randomly turning into an unstoppable rage fueled monster could put everyone around her at risk, which means she's going to have to learn to be extremely cautious and develop absolute self-control. Are you serious? <laughs> ah wait, I'm just kidding. That's the plot for a completely different and far better TV show. In She-Hulk's case, it's more like a light switch that she can turn on and off whenever she wants with no repercussions, resource costs or danger to herself. And she also remains fully lucid and in control of herself while she's in Hulk form. Well, that's lucky. It's almost like the writers now have complete creative freedom to do whatever they want with absolutely no constraints or limitations. Anyway, it's not long before she's forced to reveal her powers when this ridiculous art Asshole bursts into her courtroom for absolutely no reason. Ah! 
mind-blowing editing there, guys. Mm -hmm. The incident causes Jen to lose her job, but that's okay because literally five minutes later she's been hired by a different firm who want her to represent superheroes and villains as the She-Hulk. Well, don't you love how actions and decisions have serious long-term repercussions for the protagonist and those around them? Spider-Man could only dream of such quality character developments. Jennifer's right. job now is to represent people with superpowers in various court cases that showcase the writer's complete ignorance of the American legal system while navigating the trials and tribulations of dating as a famous green monster lady, thus showcasing the writer's complete ignorance of men, modern culture and normal interaction between humans. Honestly, it's genuinely hard to know where to even begin when it comes to critiquing this show, because pretty much every single aspect of it is so irredeemably awful that it's practically a waste of time trying to sift through it. I mean, I guess we might as well start by judging a book by its cover, which in this case means the visuals. Now, anyone with functioning optic nerves doesn't need me to tell them that She-Hulk is a visual nightmare. The CG is the kind of awkward, jerky, badly animated oh, trash that I'd expect from a low-budget superhero show to... from the mid 2000s thousands. Jen moves and walks with all the grace and fluidity of an NPC from a PlayStation 2 game to the point where I kept expecting her to get stuck in doorways and start glitching out. And it's even worse when she actually has to speak. Half the time her mouth doesn't even match up with the dialogue that she's saying. Your Honor, really? I believe this information to be incredibly relevant given the nature of the complaint. How the fuck could this come from the same studio who made wow, stuff like Thanos? That. And what's truly mind-boggling is that they actually have has to speak. Half the time her mouth doesn't even match up with the dialogue that she's saying. Your Honor, I believe this information to be incredibly relevant given the nature of wow. the complaint. How the fuck could this come from the same studio who made stuff like Thanos? And what's truly mind-boggling is that they actually had a 6 foot 7 inch model to act as a reference point for the animators, which begs the rather obvious question, why the fuck didn't they just paint her green and save themselves a shit ton of money? The writing is another massive yeah. steaming turd that absolutely has to be addressed. The overarching plot is... Well, basically non-existent. Each episode feels like it was conceived by getting a group of nine-year-olds to write a bunch of single-sentence ideas onto a board, and then throwing oh, darts at them wrong. to see which ones came up. One the board, I mean, not the nine-year-olds. That sort of thing doesn't end well. Believe that! We got a bleeder! Jen tries out a dating app. Jen goes dress shopping. Jen goes to a wedding. Jen gets ghosted by her boyfriend. Jen meets a new man. It's like fucking party time here, mate. <laughs> Most episodes barely manage to scrape past the 20 minute mark, and even then it feels like there isn't enough plot to sustain them. I mean, don't get me wrong, they also feel like they're about two hours long, but that's just my own perception of time getting dilated by this shittiness. Yeah, Whatever yeah, nonsense is going on either serves as a vague backdrop to Jen's personal issue of the week, or as a catalyst for some tedious new drama in oh, her so life. Wow, it's okay. almost like the writers totally don't understand or care about superheroes, or the law, or constructing action sequences, or character development and really just want to write a breezy comedy about a modern professional woman trying to negotiate a man's world. Which is all a bit of a problem when your show's entire premise is built around your protagonist being a superpowered lawyer. While we're talking about Jen though, I suppose I should mention that she's probably one of the least interesting, least intelligent and least likeable protagonists I've ever wow. seen on TV. <laughs> well, aside from the obvious of course. Wow. She's self-absorbed, shallow, condescending, narcissistic, patronising, boring and aggressive. And that's before she even turns into She-Hulk. I've already talked about the ridiculous unhinged rant she goes on against Bruce, a man that's lost and sacrificed more than she'll ever have. I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. And this kind of shitty behaviour pretty much sets the tone for her entire character. She gets to do and say whatever she wants with almost no negative consequences. In fact, if anything, she seems to get rewarded for it. And if that's not an insight into the mindset... Like... I don't get I honestly did I get why she was saying stuff like that. Cause Bruce lost his entire like life. He still probably can't get a normal job. Um he lost his probably his only friends. He's like alone now. And he's still, like, getting better. Like, if I had, like, a 
family or friend who was struggling with something, um, I wouldn't be like, oh, well, compared to me, I, I control myself better than you. That's like rude. <laughs> of the writers, I don't know what is. For me, the hallmark of a good, well-rounded character is someone that you can picture in situations outside the scope of the story. For example, I can totally imagine what guys like Tony Stark, Steve Rogers and Peter Parker might get up to in their spare time, but outside of working and drinking with her one and only friend, I genuinely can't picture what Jennifer Walters might do with her life. What are her interests, her hobbies, her personal history, her aspirations, her hopes, fears, dreams and insecurities? Don't know, because the writers don't seem to know or care either. She's basically just an avatar for them to project all of their gripes she and hang-ups onto. And it's a shame, really, because I think Tatiana Maslany is a pretty good actress, and I actually ended up feeling kind of sorry for her. You can tell that she's working her arse off trying to sell this shitty character to the audience, but all it really does is prove that you can't polish a turd. Tim Roth, on the other hand, delivers the kind of don't-give-a-fuck performance that tells me the only reason he came back was a hefty paycheck. And I couldn't help but wonder, why did they choose this guy out of all the backstory characters they had available? Remember Emil Blonsky from that mediocre Hulk movie from like 13 years ago? Nah, neither do I particularly, but he's back, and now he looks and acts like a completely different character. I was also about to say that the show disrespects Wong by turning him into a goofy, clueless moron with a room-temperature IQ, but let's be honest here, Multiverse of Madness already did that pretty effectively, so I guess I can't criticise She-Hulk for beating a dead horse. Honestly, Benedict Wong, you deserve far better than this. But the one that really saddens me the most is Charlie Cox's Daredevil. Don't get me wrong, out of all the flaccid, meek, brain-dead excuses for male characters in this show, he's probably the one that gets humiliated the least, and his brief court scene only serves to underline how absolutely incompetent Jen is as a lawyer. I'm dismissing this case. Am I gonna go to jail? No, but I would like you to. But man, the fact he's even in this show is like some weird taint on his character now. The fact that he went from this... <laughs> To this... That was funny. It's something we'll never be able to wipe from our collective memory, no matter how much was, toilet duck we drink. Funny. Believe me, I, I know. I, I, I and like the thing is, all of this stuff, the, the unlikable characters, the, the nonsensical storytelling, that. the laughable special effects, would Look, be more... I, I actually enjoyed how they did uh, Matt uh, in the show. Uh, basically because... You can still tell that he's like brooding a little bit, but has like a funny side to him. Like he's not gonna be the same Matt from the Netflix shows. Less tolerable if this show managed to deliver the one thing it desperately wants to sell itself on comedy. But that's where She-Hulk really falls on its gigantic green arse because, well, how can I put this? It makes Amy Schumer look like Dave Chappelle. And before you make assumptions, no, I am not a matador. That would make the two of us fighting pretty cliche, no? You almost tasted that. Num, 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 eat it up. Go play, okay, three, two, one. You know I'm the hottest. You ain't never gotta heat me up. I just did 600. I'm not even a superhero. Hey, did somebody take our order? Longers, can I get for you? No. We can talk about the Sopranos. Fine, no spoilers. Honestly, if your goal is to break the negative stereotype that women aren't funny, then this show really isn't doing your cause any favours. And of course, there's only ever one target for the jokes in She-Hulk. Almost without fail, the men in this show are portrayed as incompetent, overbearing, patronising, dumb, cowardly, weak, insecure and comically misogynistic. There's a hot chick over there, I'm gonna go talk to it. Basically just a bunch of convenient straw men for Jen to knock down with absolutely no effort. The writers seem to view men as either corrupt and arrogant egomaniacs undeserving of the success they have, or unthreatening submissive whipping boys who do exactly what they're told and know better than to question their female overlords. And I don't know man, beneath all the smiles and the lame jokes, there's this weird undertone of spiteful bitterness and hatred to She-Hulk, but hey, it's also kind of funny once you realise you're basically seeing the writer's own personal hang-ups and insecurities projected 
projected right onto the screen in front of you. Why don't my co-workers respect me for being given a job that I didn't earn? Why do guys think it's okay to flirt with me at a bar, but also why am I still single and staring down the barrel of middle age? Why do people question my judgement even though I'm plainly terrible at my job? Why do men not like me for who I am instead of how I look, even though I desperately want to look better? Why are my family putting pressure on me to settle down when I just want to party and pretend like I'm still in my mid-twenties? Why is there nothing of substance or value in my entire life outside of work and drinking? Why can't I just do and say whatever I want with absolutely no consequences? These are all issues that I can safely label as rich liberal women problems. It's the kind of petty, mundane and mostly self-inflicted irritations that people like Hollywood writers obsess over because it's the closest thing to adversity they've ever experienced. So naturally, they think everyone else can relate to it too, because the idea of anyone existing outside of their carefully protected socio-economic Southern Californian bubble is some crazy mind-bending impossibility for them. Yeah, I'm sure a working class teenager from Hicksville, Virginia working a minimum wage job is totally going to empathise with the online dating woes of a rich, narcissistic 30-something lawyer. All of this stuff adds up to a gigantic pile of green shit, without doubt the worst TV show Marvel has ever put out, and a complete waste of time, money and life. And the thing is, who even really cares at this point? Marvel certainly doesn't. I'm sure it's going to get a second season despite being an internet lol cow for the past couple of months and a complete embarrassment, and I'm sure that She-Hulk will probably end up appearing in future movies too. In which case, well, they're welcome to her. But if you value your sanity, or just the couple of hours of your life that it'll take you to fight your way through this, then you'll stay as far away from She-Hulk as you possibly can. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. He really went in. He went in. Yeah. She Hulk was a bad show. Hated it. You really didn't like it. <sighs> That's all I have for you guys today. Peace.